Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be looking at multiplication properties or multiplication number properties today in this short mini lesson. What to expect? We're going to talk about several different topics commutative property, associative property, distributive property, zero property, and identity property or the property of one. And I said that real quick because we have a lot to cover in this lesson. So hopefully we'll be able to get through all of those and be able to see some examples of each. Commutative property. We've talked about this one in a previous lesson where we talked about commuting meaning to move, like when you commute to work. Although it can only be used with addition and multiplication, today we're talking about multiplication properties. So we would call it the commutative property of multiplication. All right, and that's the one that we're going to be looking at. So the way that the, it works with um, moving numbers or commuting numbers back and forth would look like this. Three groups or four groups of three is the same as three groups of four. So four times three, which would look kind of like this, is the same thing as three times four, which would look like this. So our commutative property just tells us what we already know. Four times three is 12, three times four is 12. You can move numbers back and forth when you're multiplying. Remember, with the commutative property, you are moving things around. That is a key part of knowing if it's the commutative property. Let's talk about the associative property of multiplication. Association is basically grouping things together. So it requires a grouping symbol. All right, think about people you associate with. They are people that maybe you like, you hang out with, you're together with them. Okay, so you're going to see these numbers grouped together using grouping symbols. Let me show you how this would work. If I had the question 4 times 2 plus 5, um, instead, um, I would multiply that like this. 4 times 2, and that gives me 8, and then 8 times 5, which gives me 40. All right, so that's how I would associate the numbers together. Now, let's say I didn't want to do 4 times 2, but instead wanted to do the 2 times 5, because I know 2 times 5 gives me 10, and my answer will be 40. Notice that it's the same answer, but the, the association of the numbers, or using the associative property with multiplication, means we can do some of the easier multiplication first, like if I recognize 2 times 5 is 10, and I, I like multiplying times 10, that's easy, then I could just go ahead and switch it out like this. Okay, So it's sometimes easier to move the grouping symbols. In this case, I'll show you one more example. If I had 8 times 2 times 5, again, just shift it over and do the 2 times 5 first, so that now I'm multiplying times 8. It's a way to group numbers together to make your life a little bit easier. Key thing to remember with associative property is that you will have grouping symbols that you move. The grouping symbols move, the numbers stay in the same order. Look at that, 825, 825. The numbers stay in the same order, but the grouping symbols move. All right, distributive property. This is when the numbers outside the parentheses distribute into the parentheses. It gets multiplied times everything inside the, the parentheses, and that's pretty much it. Okay? There's absolutely no need for this fourth oval, and I've done that twice, which is just even more funny. All right, so let's distribute. If we have 3 times 1 plus 2, in the past you've probably solved by doing 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. When you use the distributive property, instead you would move 3 times 1 and 3 times 2. So it would look like 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. We could even add in a step there, 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 if you wanted to do it that way. But you'll notice it gives you the same exact answer, and that's the point. The distributive property is a true property that will work and will sometimes in the future make sense to use. Right now, just want you to recognize it's when you're multiplying what's outside the parentheses times everything inside of the parentheses. All right, our last two properties. The zero property, I want you to look for a pattern here. 20 times zero equals zero. Three times zero equals zero. Uh, 11 times zero equals zero. 
0 times 5 equals 0, and 234 times 0 equals 0. Do you see a pattern here? You should notice that anything times 0 equals 0, and that is the 0 property of multiplication. Our final property is the identity property. It's sometimes called the property of 1, but it's usually called the identity property. And we're going to, again, look for patterns. 15 times 1 is 15. 8 times 1 is 8. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 9 is 9. 3, 4, 5 times 1 is 3, 4, 5. Anything times 1 gives you the original number. That is the identity property, or the property of 1. All right, It's a property that basically shows you the original number over again. All right. Quick recap. We've talked about the commutative property. That's when numbers move back and forth. We've talked about the associative property. That's where you can move the parentheses, but the numbers stay where they are. The distributive property is when you move or when you take what's outside the parentheses and you multiply it times what's inside the parentheses. So 4 times 7 gives you that 28, and then 4 times 2 would give you the 8. The zero property is anything times zero. That's pretty easy to remember. And the identity property, or the property of one, is when you have one times a number giving you that original number. In this case, sorry, that's cut off there. One times six is equal to six. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.